We have a Ryan in Junker Town. Makes me sad, but I can still go Ash. Play Widow. I could go Widow here. I don't want to Widow with Ryan Zarya though, because we really need more tank damage with Ryan Zarya. Because we're not gonna have any. I'm not gonna have any help from the tanks if I go on a flank, which is what Widow wants to do. Ash with Mercy is like a similar. It's not that different from Widow, but it offers me a little bit more flexibility in terms of I can I can play a tank breaking style that will enable my my Ryan and Zarya to succeed more. More Sonic's here. Hopefully we don't get a headshot. There's a ball here. I know there's one guy like this who's just like fighting on his own. You just always fight that guy, you know? Because he's nobody will help him where he is. Alright. Like what he's doing here is very bad because... Oh, well, because my Ryan owns him. But he just 1v6, you know? Like he can't get any help. It's not possible to get help. Sometimes at least it's possible to get help, and there's like, even like if there was a widow who was in an LOS where you could follow up on the slam, that could work, right? Ryan goes in one v six as well. Big one v six fans in this game. Chill. Rhino's such a bad hero. I mean, dude, <laughs> the Rhino's 27% old. He even got a pin kill. Got an uncontested bob. No, just push cart. I'm gonna go push up to the high ground, catch forward spawners, because they spawn here. The ball's here. Okay, we'll shoot him first. 1v6 mines. My tanks can just run into these mines. They should. This is not what my Ryan's doing. He should literally eat them all. Because that just support ult. Very good advanced play to make against Wrecking Ball is when he mines, you just um, you just eat them on tanks. Unless they're obviously if you're fighting, then you can't do that. But if you're not under pressure, there's really no reason not to do that. You know, too much pressure here and no no shield tank with me, so I unfortunately have to get off high ground. I would love to be there, but. It's unfortunate. I wish my team went high ground there. We really don't want to give up, we just go low ground like that, but we really have no choice when our team doesn't want to, like, it's only me and me and Mercy high ground. I can just get one shot by Hanzo, so. If I have like a Ryan with me there though, I, mean, I can just stand there and not move and shoot the Hanzo and then I can kill him. Classic example of why you really want to group up with like your allies when you make plays. Something on Ash I like to do is when um, when I have a lot of shots in the mag and somebody shows up, I'll I'll use my um, if I have a lot of shots then I'm gonna use my left clicks and if I don't have so many shots I'll right click just to be efficient with the um, like even breaking shields you know it's a nice jump in from him I think my Ryan could have been with me as well but it's not the end of the world. This is honestly why heroes like Ryan are bad, because they just aren't able to traverse the map efficiently. It's a very bad play from the other team is to fight here. They should let us close the door. The problem is that winning a fight here, like, it's so easy for us to push, right, when we have this door here.
Like, if they had let the cart come through the door and then they win a fight, then we have all these tight chokes to come through. But if you fight too early on this map, they, like, we just push through this big open door and it's really easy to push. Compared to letting us push a little bit and then fighting where we'd, we'd be in a much harder fight. Sigmas used like his whole resource package for very little. Follow up on the ball slam. You know, there's multiple ways to follow up on the ball slam, right? There's like the There's like the obvious way. Oh my god, I almost fell into the dragon. There's like the obvious way, which is like playing Tracer and you know Genji and you jump in when the ball jumps in. Everyone knows that, but the less obvious way is to like play snipers and just wait for the ball slam and if you time your shot so it's like right when they're at the top of the slam it's really easy to hit the shot knowing when to let the car get pushed yeah i mean i think i would can call that issue in general the issue of knowing where to fight like where on the map you want to fight and i've that's like the number one issue i feel like i see at this rank in terms of how people play is they're not fighting where their comp is good or where the map is good or where the objectives and yeah so basically it's like the comp and the map like, they're not thinking about those things in terms of where they take fights. Like, they just instantly fight uh, uh, without without a mindset of, like, trying to win the game, trying to, you know, prepare for, for the key points in the map for objectives. When do you engage with Genji with your hammer slams? The way I like to do it on Genji is when the guy slams, um, when, when the hammer slams, I'll let, like, the same way a sniper does where... Right, imagine the Hammond slamming here. Like, I'll let him, I'll like, wait, he slams, and then I headshot the guy. It's the same thing on Genji, except when he gets slams, I'll do a left click as they're bouncing up in the air, because it's easy to hit a left click. And then I'll dash in and I'll right click. And that is usually how I like to engage on a Hammond slam. That's optimal. Sometimes you just, you don't have the time and you just have to dash in on the guy when he's slammed. But typically you want to dash in after the slam comes through and hit them while they're in the air with the dash. One shot there was kill, so that was a good push, but I just beefed it basically. I love killing the Torp turret insta whenever it comes up. Like, if you kill it fast, it takes it's like less HP, right? So, focusing that Torp turret down early. I don't even care, my Bob gets slept. It gets a sleep out, and it's gonna wake up at the end anyway, and it holds the card anyway. So, bobbing the card is generally such a strong play because. Even the worst case scenario, which is your Bob is instantly gets slept, is not that bad. My Bob's still accomplishing something. It's still holding the car pressure, and if we force a sleep, and it still wakes up, right? So, bobbing in a way where the worst case scenario isn't that bad. Another way to do it would be to like uppercut somebody with the Bob, like hit them with it directly so that you can get a kill instantly, and then even if Bob gets slept, again, you already got a kill. You already did something. It's this principle of like consistent, guarant high, high likelihood value, you know, like. Playing in a way where you have a guarantee of success. Oh, shit, get back, bro. Just wanna try and get out of here. The cart ran over the turret. Like, this is a key moment where I don't really want to fight immediately. Take these, like, low commitment fights. There's a bunch of guys stacked there, so a dynamite is super powerful. And, like, it even forces them off the cart just by making that play. This guy's going to jump me. I'm going to coach him off. I'm going to bob the cart. Same principle. Bob's holding cart. I don't care if it gets slept. I'm still having a lot of impact. 
Fun fact, Torb cannot armor if he pops his E like that. So, oh shit. It's a very powerful... Um, it's a very powerful play to make to jump on him when he's using his lava. Because he can't pop his armor. He can't save himself. I'm gonna die here. There's no point in running. I'm just gonna run in and die aggressively. If I get a kill, that's that's absolutely wonderful. It's not necessary, but it's nice. But I just make sure I die on the cart there. Because as I was looking about running away, I was like, you know, I could get caught running away here. So because I think that might happen, I'm just going to jump on the cart, which means my death is going to be less impact. It's like a high risk play to run away there and try to survive where you get a big payoff. But the risk's not worth it for me here. You know, I just care more about... Stopping the cart and making sure this next fight's in a, in a good location instead of, you know, closer to the final cap. Hey, listen here, but my position right now is so dominant. My team is jumping in for some reason. I guess they're flying heroes, so they don't care. But. I'm gonna break this bubble preemptively because I think the Winston might want to utilize it later. I don't care about this push though. I'm not interested in it. I'm not leaving my very my, my power position. My team should not want to. I mean, they should play where they are, but they shouldn't jump out that window. It's just suicidal. And so, because I know it's suicidal, I, I won't participate in it. You know, I'm just gonna play my game, stay in my power spot, and like lo and behold, a, a kill comes to me with that McCree. I'm able to counter kill him because of it. I honestly feel a little bit bad from this Winston. My aim is kind of cracked right now. I'm just going to bob down mid. Same principle. I want to put it in an annoying location. Where the enemy is just scared to do anything right now. Because the bob is going to wake up. It's not really going to do anything here. But it's just a zoning tool. If we're better here, we could have we had the opportunity to land some headshots. Alright, they're using a lot of ults here. Same principle, we want to make sure we're dying on the cart. We might not even get another touch here, unfortunately. We have a ball, so we actually can get another touch. It's going to be a sketchy one, but this is the problem. See, like, this is exactly the mistake I didn't make before, where I, I, didn't, I just died on cart. These guys might survive together, but that's kind of only because their echo's not... now. they're going to die. See, like, this type of death, super late death, is like a game-losing death. Whereas if they had just died at the same time I died, they would have been able to touch this. Um, this is sketchy, but there's a mega here, so I'm not, and, and the, the retreat path is pretty easy. Like, it's close, because I can have this lower retreat path. So that's why I, I go for the run out here. Oh, I'm discorded. I gotta respect that discord. It's one. He's peeking again. Wow, that's crazy. I didn't think he'd peek. Yeah, now they switch off Ana, so I can just kind of throw the bob wherever I want it. This Winston's doing a good job getting in my face. I actually just dominating with like insanely cracked headshots on him, but I think the Winston's playing pretty well. Like you see how he's contesting me, but he's not forcing the kill. He's like, he's not willing to leave his bubble for the kill because he knows that if he does, he could just die. So he's he's playing his bubble cooldowns pretty effectively, honestly. There's an echo like above me. I want to just left click her here because if I scope in, she might just like stickies me or headshot me or something. So, um, oh my god, that's very close. That's kind of a bad bubble. I would contrast that with his other bubbles. Which should I would contrast that with the ones that he made before, which were a lot higher impact. Same another bad bubble from him. He's not like accomplishing anything with that bubble. So, the key is, Winston, is you want your bubble to be controlling a key location. I mean, that bubble, you could argue, is just like a full retreat bubble, but... So, it's not that bad, but, you know, it's like a get-the-fuck-out type bubble. It's not going to do anything for you. It's literally just buying time. 
showing his back too, but he can't make a jump like that with, with Hog on his team. It's a bad switch. They should have a D.Va, or at the very least a Zarya. You can see how big the difference is when they play this shit team comp where they don't have a tank to support Winston. And I like that he instantly switches the ball. That's, that's the right call. He can't support his plays playing... Um... We're going to look for kills on these backliners. This guy's picked up so we can get the easy hit on him. Guy's gonna touch. We're just gonna throw a dynamite on him. Ash, what's your main? Could be anything, bro. Hoggy Woggies? 